good afternoon dear students can you guess who i am i am vs parabrahmachar lecturer in english i have been teaching english in this institution for the last 4 years before coming to this college i worked as a principal and as a lecturer in government institutions of tumkur district i have taught english for more than 3 decades now i am giving a grammar lesson from vijay chetan of u college this happens to be your first english grammar class before this i had already given a introductory class for first pc in our real classroom situation maybe in october we will be meeting in a face to face contact now as you are aware because of circumstances we are meeting in a online situation this is a distant education move we cannot say how effective the lesson will be this all depends upon your participation if you are very active and concentrate your attention you can participate and you can gain a lot of information from this class without much introduction is already late we are in entering september three months of past june july august three months of past so we haven't got much time in our disposal we have to hurry through our portions the first lesson grammar lesson for first puc is articles and prepositions perhaps most of you have got the text i mean what book for pu classes we have two books one textbook and the other one is what book if you open the book what book at page 1 you will see the title articles this happens to be the first area in fact in puc we are not going to teach any new area of grammar all the areas have been discussed in your 8th 9th and 10th lower classes what we are doing here is just to revise those lessons reinforcement just we consolidate what you have learned already so let's begin with the articles most of you are aware you know what articles are can you define articles what are articles how would you define them let us try to answer this question what are articles why do we use articles and how do we use articles how to place articles or how to use them the first question so these three questions you have to ask for each and everything if you want to get clarification for the concept any grammar concept you should ask these three questions what why and how what is it why is it and how is it so if you ask these three questions sir you can get lot of information and the concept will be very clear to you articles what are they articles are also called determiners some grammarians determiners some grammarians are fond of calling them as determiners they are also called adjectives you know why they are called adjectives they qualify nouns when i say for example when i say a book or a boy this a qualifies by a boy on by a book right so some grammarians they say they are adjectives they are determiners why they are called determiners they are determiners because they determine what follows them what comes next they determine they show so they are called determiners so articles 
what are they we have three articles you know definite articles and indefinite articles in english you are familiar with these two words definite articles and indefinite articles definite and indefinite definite article is the or the and indefinite articles a or an these three are called articles so this question is answered what are articles articles are also called determiners or adjectives we can also say they come before nouns usually before nouns they come before nouns i will tell you what are nouns what nouns are very important for placement of articles i will tell you later definite article is the or the we call it depending upon the word or sound that comes next if vowel comes next we call it the if consonant comes we say the indefinite articles a and why do we use articles next question why do we use them see for this question the answer is very simple language is a matter of conventions why do we say a book why do we say an elephant why do we say the answer is very simple this is a convention placing placing articles before common noun singulars is a convention for this question the answer is very simple convention language is a matter of convention is a habit that is how people speaking english language in english speaking countries they use articles so we have to use them as non native speakers we are all not native speakers we are non native speakers english is our second language for most of us english is not first language second language so we follow the language conventions so this question is answered why do we use them because language is a matter of conventions english people they use articles before countable singular nouns so we use them how do we use them the next question is very important how do you use them where do we use how or where you can ask this question also where do you use them or how do you use them this question is very simple you are all familiar with a and d you know where to use them your teachers must have told you try to recall where do you use a your teachers have told you when a consonant comes for example a book we say a boy a girl a bench look at these words why do you use a before them see look at this noun book is a singular common noun countable singular noun so i use a because the first sound is ba consonant the first sound here in the second word boy is consonant the first sound here is ga the first sound here is ba so we can define we can make it a rule that if a noun singular countable noun this is very important where do we use articles so here we have to try to learn a little elaborately where do you use articles articles are not used before all nouns you know nouns have been classified into all nouns can be classified all the things that we see around us can be classified into two categories broadly we can classify them into two categories countables and uncountables countables and uncountables They are explanatory, self-explanatory. They don't expect any 
explanation. Without explanation, you can understand. Countable means things that can be counted. Uncountable or uncountable. Things which cannot be counted. So all the natural phenomena that we see around us, we can classify them into two categories. Countables, things that can be counted. For example, all the things, books, students, trees, benches, like this, teachers, all common nouns, things, persons, we can classify them. And uncountables, uncountables, things which cannot be counted. We cannot count, for example, water. You cannot count water. You cannot count air. Air cannot be counted. Similarly, glass, wood, wood. Similarly, you cannot count paddy, wheat, sugar. As it is in a natural state, not by way of quintals or cages. Sugar as it is, paddy, wheat. So, they are all uncountables. So, countables, uncountables, things that can be counted, things that cannot be counted. Now, this concept is very important. This idea is very important for placement of articles. If you want to place A or an, you must be very clear about these countables. A or an comes before countable singular. See, book. Book is a countable noun. Common noun. Countable, common noun, singular. So, A is used before countable, singular, common noun. These are all common nouns because bench, girl, boy, book. Why they are called common nouns? Because they are known like that. They have been known like that. It's like a name. The book is a name given to books. It refers to books in common. Boy. The word refers to all boys. It's a common word. That refers to all boys. So common nouns. Girl, all girls. The first girl refers to all girls. A common noun. You know, proper noun is there. What is the proper noun? Name given. For example, Ramesh, Gopal, Shankar, Kamala, Shashikala, like this. So names, given names. They are called proper names. So this must be very clear to you. Common names, names given in common. Names that refer to things in common. Proper nouns means given names. Bangalore. Bangalore is a given name. The name given to that place. Mysore, Delhi, England. That is proper names. Next, there is another noun that is called material noun. Materials means things, substances out of which something is made. For example, iron. Out of iron, we make table, chair, furniture, all these things. Substance, iron is a material. Similarly, wood is a material. Out of wood, you can make table, chair, furniture, like this. So, substance, glass is a substance. So, all such substances are called, materials are called material nouns. There is another noun, abstract noun. Abstract noun refers to qualities for example honesty truth goodness so you cannot see abstract nouns means you cannot see them you cannot touch you cannot feel beauty honesty health so such nouns are called abstract nouns abstract means which cannot be touched felt that can be experienced refers to qualities, state of mental states, beauty, health, truth, honesty, non-violence, such words are called abstract nouns. This is must be very clear to you. You should know these nouns because 
without knowing these nouns sir it's very difficult to place articles sir so where do we use this a not before material nouns not before abstract nouns not before proper noun you see we are talking about indefinite articles sir indefinite articles a or an where do we use a or an if this concept is very clear to you if you know what common nouns are you can easily place a or an before those nouns so proper nouns they don't take indefinite articles a or an before names you don't use a or an a bangalore we don't say a mysore we don't say similarly a gopal a ramesh we don't say right materials a water we don't say a air we don't say right a wheat we don't say next abstract nouns similarly a health we don't say a violence a truth a honesty we don't say so before abstract nouns before material nouns before proper nouns we don't use indefinite articles right is very clear to you now where do you use them common nouns we don't use indefinite articles before plurals we don't say a books a students a trees we don't use before plurals then where do we use them we use a or an before countable singular common noun so it is very clear to you now for using or for placing a or an you must decide for yourself whether it is a countable noun next term whether it is singular even before that term, you should ask yourself whether it is a common noun common noun see these three things are very important so for using a or an you should ask these questions to you whether it is a common noun whether the name has come common it refers to commonly is a commonly used word next next thing is whether it is countable whether it is a singular if it is a singular we use a or an again a question comes where to use a or an a is used it depending upon sound if the sound is a e i o u that is vowel sound if the word the following the word if the noun if the singular noun begins with a vowel sound we use an an is used before vowel sound if the noun begins with a consonant sound consonant sound we use a this is the theory okay the theory is very clear to you similarly you see the examples i have written here see a book this is common noun countable noun singular noun that's why and it begins with a consonant sound that's why a book is again boy countable common noun singular begins with a consonant sound so i is used again girl common noun countable singular so a is used bench again common noun countable singular so a is used and let's take an an apple an egg similarly apply this rule and then an import like this see common noun countable apple singular and begins with a a means vowel sound that's why an is used again common noun countable singular begins with a vowel sound a e that's why an is used a neg an import again common noun countable singular 
begins with the vowel sound, so an is used. Similarly, let us say, these words are very familiar to you. This is only a revision. What I am doing now is only a revision lesson. All these things have been discussed in your previous classes. So I am just revising because now I am going to give you an exercise from your workbook, first page. That's why I am revising this concept. Okay? Umbrella and umbrella, they say. So this is clear to you. Where to use? A and an. Next step, you will take up the. Where to use the? The is used. The is called a definite article. Where to use them? Where to use the? The is used before a noun when it is definite. When we recognize the topic, the thing or the person is definite, we use the before the noun. For example, you see, the blackboard, I say. I don't say a blackboard. Why do I say the blackboard? Because I can identify. So the thing is definite. Both the speaker and the listener can identify which board I am referring to. The board means this board. Right? The classroom. This classroom. When I say the classroom means uh, I am talking about the classroom. This classroom means it is definite. There is no confusion. The speaker and the listener everybody can identify which person or thing place we are talking about. Let me give an example. See, a Russian and an American came to my soul. Look at this. Just to illustrate this point, I am giving this example. Once a Russian and an American came to my soul. The Russian The Russian stayed in a hotel. In a hotel. The American stayed in a friend's house, in his friend's house. In his friend's house. Yes. So this is a very good example to illustrate what a definite article is. Look, a Russian, an American. See, first time talking about a person, Russian, first time. So we don't know which Russian, a Russian, one Russian person, a person from Russia, and an American. First time I am using this expression, American. An American is an American. Came to my soul. Next, I am using the Russian. Which Russian I am talking about? So I am referring to the Russian for the second time. So we don't we know very well which Russian I am talking about. Which Russian? The Russian I refer to in the first line. So when I talk to the same person, refer to the same person for the second time, I use the Russian. I don't say a Russian here because already I have used a Russian. Now I am talking about the same Russian, so I use the Russian. The Russian stayed in a hotel. The American, here I use the American because I already talked about American first time. Second time I am talking about the American and we know which American we are talking about. This is second reference. So definite article is used before a noun that is used for the second time. So, here I use the American. So, that is called definite article. This is very important use of definite article. Where do we use definite article? Second reference. When the noun is definite, we use the before the noun. Next step, we use the before the superlative degree. All these things have been told. In your the is used before a superlative degree. You know very well. The highest. Himalaya is the tallest. 
highest of all the mountains the everest the everest is the highest of all the peaks right gandhi ji was the greatest man of our generations the greatest so before superlative degree we use law then when we talk about unique things for example the sun we say because we can't we can't say yes sun when i say yes sun there must be some other sun one sun where is the other sun you cannot answer this question so these natural phenomena the sun the moon the sky the earth all the planets they are all unique means special they are only one of their kind so before unique things we use the before unique objects you know this remember all these things next before the names of seas oceans mountain ranges rivers the himalayas ranges mountain ranges the alps mountains the pacific ocean the atlantic ocean the indian ocean he said the arabian sea the bay of bengal like this the ganga the brahmaputra names of rivers names of oceans names of seas names of mountain ranges names of holy books the ramayana he said we don't say a ramayana when you say a ramayana it means one ramayana we are talking about where is the other ramayana you cannot answer this question so ramayana is only one unique thing so unique book so when we talk about that unique book unique object we say the ramayana the mahabharata the quran the bible we say right so remember this before unique things before the names of rivers seas oceans mountain ranges we use the so this is enough for our purpose and now i'll give you a small paragraph you have to identify the articles identify them underline them identify them and you must tell me why they have used those articles whether it is definite first you have to say whether it is definite or indefinite if they have used indefinite why they have used a or an if they have used definite why they have used so first paragraph is for your understanding just to recapitulate what you have learned already once well, let me write just there are only four sentences i'll write those four sentences or you see if you have workbook page number 1 first paragraph i have taken first paragraph you can see that first paragraph you can see yes you see once an old hermit old hermit saw a kite a kite catching catching a little mouse he felt sorry for the mouse he took an apple he took an apple and threw it at the kite the kite dropped the mouse in fear and flew away flew away one more sentence then the hermit picked up the mouse and by his holy 
power power change h into a yang maiden yang maiden maiden is girl yes now underline exercise is underline underline the articles underline the articles and see why they have been used there look at the first line once an old hermit where is the article an old hermit so a kite kite means is not the kite that you fly play game with kite is a bird kite is like eagle like bird kite a kite catching a a little mouse look at this article a little mouse he felt sorry for the mouse look at the mouse he took an apple again an apple and threw it at the kite look at the article d the kite again dropped the mouse in fear and flew away then the hermit picked up the mouse and by his holy power holy power magic power changed it into a young maiden so we have underlined all the articles and a the and the the why look at the first question why they have used and here we know the rule and is used before a comes a vowel sound old old a i go your vowels right countable singular hermit comes here hermit common noun singular countable and here comes an adjective old so here vowel sound is there so an old again come here a little mouse again look at the mouse mouse is common noun countable singular and here there is an adjective which begins with the la consonant that's what i use you again if i sorry for the mouse here we already discussed the definite article is used because for the first time we have said a mouse second time when we are talking about the same mouse it is definite for us we are referring to the same mouse that's why it is definite definite article is used here he took an apple for the first time apple first time you know common noun countable singular begins with vowel sounds so and is used next at the kite here definite article because see kite see for the first time here we have used a kite a kite we have said we are referring to the same kind same bird so here we have used definite article again we are referring to the same definite bird so here we have used definite article again the mouse we have said because mouse has already come here in the first line we have talked about the mouse we have referred and we are referring to the same mouse for the second time it is definite for us so the mouse in fear and flew away then the hermit Second time we are talking about the hermit. Hermit has come in the first line. Definite article is definite for us. Picked up the mouse again. Definite. Again, here a young maiden. First time we are using right singular, countable, common noun. Consonant sound is there. Young. This is an adjective. Now it is here, right? So now it is very clear to you what are articles. where do we use them why do we use them where do we use them or how do we use them you know articles are determiners or they are called adjectives why do we use them it is a convention in english language native speakers english speaking countries english people they use articles before singular 
countable common nouns. They use them. So we use them. Next step. Where do we use them? We know the concept is very clear to us. When a singular, countable, common noun begins with a consonant sound, we use a. If the singular countable noun begins with an old sound, we use an. If that noun is definite, we use the before that noun. So, articles theory, articles concept is familiar to you. I have revised actually all these things. Nothing is new. All these things have been taught in your 8th, 9th classes. What we are trying to do, we have tried today is to recapitulate, remember what we have learned already. Right? Now, see the workbook, page number 1. In the next class, next grammar class, I want you to do this exercise A, page 1, exercise A. It is given there. There are 10 sentences. Fill in the blanks with A or A or D. Fill in the blanks with appropriate articles. Let me do one or two for you. First one. He is dash youngest son in the family. What goes there? Can you do that exercise? He is dash youngest son in the family. Youngest. Superlative degree is there. So, we have discussed already. We have learned. Before superlative degree, definite article the is used. The youngest son in the family. He can be identified. The definite article because in the family, the youngest person is not everyone. It is definite. If you ask me why do we use the, I can say the youngest person or the eldest person is not everyone. That's why it is definite. So we use the youngest son in the family. Second one. Anu is looking for dash job. Looking for a job. One job. Indefinite. Which job? We do not know. Any job. Could you close dash door please? Third sentence. Could you close the door? Because we, when we are talking to each other, let us say a person is sitting in front of us, standing in front of us, we ask them, close the door. Because he knows which door we are talking about. And the speaker also knows which door he is referring to. So close the door. In fact, in a classroom or at house, we know where the doors are, where the windows are, how many windows are there, how many doors are there. It is known to us. That's why usually we refer to close the door. Close the door, please. Fourth, Anil is dash optician optician you know apply our rule remember the theory first before placing a or an we should remember whether it is countable whether it is common noun whether it is singular whether it begins with vowel or consonant apply optician begins with vowel sound so an optician dr shankar is dash dentist again dentist look at that noun you know very well let us remember once again articles are used before common nouns dentist is a common noun singular noun and countable noun and begins with da consonant so a dentist is a dr shankar is a dentist my friend is NMLA. A MLA or NMLA? NMLA. NMLA. When I say MLA, look at that word M. That M, the word M has A also. So, NMLA. It's not consonant. It's vowel. MLA. Look at this. MLA. Here A sound is there. NMLA. Seventh, Raju is in A class or the class? Because class is familiar to you. In the class, right? Each class can be identified. That is first class, second class, PUC, 10th standard, 9th, 10th. Each class is identified. Definite. That's why he is in the class. 
Rajoy is in the class. Three more sentences are there. I'll complete it. And the next one is for you. Eight. Have you ever visited Dash Islands, Andaman Islands? So I must tell you now. The use the is used before the names of groups of islands also. Islands and uh, Republican Kingdom. United Kingdom. See, you must have heard of United Kingdom. Britain is called United Kingdom. A group of islands. So, the United Kingdom we say. Even for America, we say USA, the USA, United States of America, a group of states. The United States of America, group of states. Here, the Andaman Islands, group of islands. So, we use the before these islands. Please bring dash kilogram of apples. A kilogram of apples. A kilogram. 10. Last sentence. Mara did not have any teeth on dash side of his mouth. Dash right side. This left and right is known to everyone. I know which is my left and which is my right. So it is definite. So we say the right side of his mouth. So we have revised today articles. What are articles? What are definite articles and indefinite articles? Where do we use them? Why do we use them? And how do we use them? In brief, you know, articles. Next, what you have to do? You have to use this exercise. At home, you have to work out this exercise. Page number, on page number 2, you have B. Choose the correct option. Do you enjoy listening to Dash? First option. A. Music. The music. So it must be very clear about whether music takes article or not. My brother speaks Dash. The French. French. Third one. I spent my childhood in Dash. Bangalore. The Bangalore. Fourth one. We are, all, we are skying in Dash. Alps, the Alps. No, remember that mountain ranges. Alps mountain ranges. The sun rises dash. The east, east. So five important sentences just to help you, enable you to apply the knowledge you have learned about articles. If possible, you can see, work out, See also, very simple, fill in the blanks with the appropriate articles. A and or the, wherever necessary. A, a small story is given here. First one. Second one, again there is a small story. Third one, again a small story. One, two, three. Three exercises are given. What you have to do is very simple thing. Go through it. Revise what you have learned here and decide for yourself whether to use A, and or D. And the last one is matching exercise. Here, matching exercise. Raghu is an, first A column and B column. You have to match them. Right? Okay. This is what you have learned about articles. In brief, I will tell you, because it could be an introduction, a sort of introduction for our next class. Because in the workbook, the first concept they have introduced, you are expected to learn is articles and prepositions. See, articles and prepositions. We are expected to revise it within two classes. Because this is something which is known to you. We can't spend more time on this exercise. Prepositions. The second one is a sort of introduction. I'll ask you, what are prepositions? Again, remember the same questions. What are prepositions? You must be ready with your answers. What are prepositions? Where do we use prepositions? Why do we use them? 
what meanings they convey. What meanings they convey. This is very important for us. Meanings they convey. So, try to revise your previous notes or grammar books and come prepared for these questions. Prepositions. In fact, you know, parts of speech. In our 8th, 9th classes, we have been taught parts of speech. What are parts of speech? 8 parts of speech. Our speech can be divided into several parts and each can be given a name. Nouns, you know, pronouns, then verbs, adverbs, adjectives, prepositions, conjunctions, and interjections. You know, nouns. Today, we have revised nouns. So, without that basic concept, we cannot understand these articles. What are nouns? A noun is a name, a person, place, animal, or thing, you know. And then, we revised kinds of nouns also. Nouns could be uncountable nouns. Broadly, all nouns can be broadly classified into uncountable nouns and countable nouns. In other way, there is other way of classifying nouns. They could be classified into common nouns, proper nouns, and then material nouns and abstract nouns. Only when we know all these things, we will be able to use appropriate articles. Again, next comes pronouns, you know, pronouns, personal pronouns. Next comes verbs. In simple words, what are verbs? Action words are called verbs. And you are familiar with tenses. When we say verbs, you should know where to use appropriate verbs. Present tense. Different forms of verbs are called tense. When I say tense, it don't get tense. Tense means forms of verb. Each verb has different forms. If I say, for example, a word like write, write, wrote, writes, writing, written, to write. You see, different forms we have. When I say learn, learn, learns, learned, learning, to learn, all these are different forms. They are called tense forms. And we have to learn as to where to use which form. That's called tense system, present tense, past tense, past possible form, infinity form. Infinity means uh, the verb uh, takes two forms, to learn, to go, to write, right? Whenever a verb is preceded by two preposition to, it is called infinitive. And the third form of the verb is called past participle form. ing form is called present participle form. All these are some technical words uh, you are familiar with. Uh, and you don't need to get frightened. It's all very simple. The easiest way of learning English grammar and English language is to use that language. So, no amount of rules and regulations, memorization of rules and regulations will help you to learn the language. What is the easiest way? How did we learn our mother tongue? Let us ask ourselves. How did we learn our mother tongue? Did anybody come and teach us any grammar? Vartamana Kala, Bhavishat Kala, Kartru Karma Kriya. Nobody taught us. When mother started teaching Canada, mother tongue to us, did our mothers tell us, teach us about tenses, consonants, vowels, all these things? No. Just they taught us language. They taught to us. So just a conversation, exposure to that language helps us to understand the language. So all these rules naturally they follow when we go on using the language automatically we will be familiar with the, the rules and regulations of that language each language has certain set of rules and regulations that is the grammar grammar is nothing but a body of rules do's and don'ts what to do what not to do where to use this where to use that which is the right form it helps us to monitor our performance. We can correct our mistakes. See, in fact, these rules, language rules, see, they are not government rules. They are made by a people 
a set of people, a speech community, Canada grammar. Means, Canada speaking people have accepted certain things, certain patterns, certain conventions. That is called Canada grammar. English speaking people, so they have certain conventions. This is the correct sentence. This is what we have to do. So, these conventions are called grammar rules. That's all. Grammar is nothing but a set of rules or a set of conventions followed by, accepted by the language community, that language community. And we are all native speakers, non native speakers because English is not our mother tongue. We are all native, non native speakers, we say, non native. So, non native speakers, we learn this language as a second language. Whatever the grammar or the conventions followed by English people, we need to follow those conventions. That's the thing. Most of the people, perhaps uh, your friends, sometimes uh, just for fun, they'll be asking certain questions to test your knowledge of vocabulary, knowledge of grammar. What's it? Questions like, uh, see, but, but, put, put, they may ask you, why? Why should it be like that? What is the answer for that question? But, but, put. Why should it be put? Why, why should it be put? And the only answer is, logical answer is, see, English is not our language. It is a convention. English people say it as but. We have to say but. That's all. English people say it as put. We should say put. That's all. You can't change it. You cannot change the language conventions. Right. That is the answer. Sometimes, you know, there may be questions like this. People may ask you to test your English knowledge. First, they ask you, where are you studying? In which class are you studying? You see. First, you see. Okay, then. You see, what is the spelling of psychology? The word psychology begins with P. But we say psychology. P is silent. We come across silent words like walk, W A L K walk, but we write W A L K for could. Most familiar examples could, should, and would. Usually, the primary school children in their lower classes, pre nursery school, they make mistakes while reading those words. If the teachers ask them to read out those words, they say could, should, would. Right? They are right in a way because they will be using their mother tongue instructions, mother tongue rules. Because in mother tongue Canada, each and every light, our letter is pronounced. When I say mara, ma, ra, both are pronounced. There cannot be any silent word for that. But in English, C, O, U, L, D, he applies the same rule. Kul, he says. But in English, we have silent letters. There, in could, should and would, that L is silent. For example, no, K N O W no, K is silent. And people ask you, why it is silent? Why can't we say could, should? Why it is silent? What's it? And the answer, the most convincing answer is, uh, you tell them, my dear friend, it is not an argument. Eh? It's not our language. It is English people language. English is spoken all over the world. 70% of the population, you know, they speak English in European countries. Right? We, as Canada speakers, we are called non-native speakers. We are learning the English language for our job purpose, for our higher studies purpose. There are many objectives of learning English language. English has become a bread earner for us. English has become a compulsory language is a license for getting any job nowadays. So, as second language learners, we need to follow these rules and regulations. So, English people say psychology, English speakers, people spell that word like that, we have to spell like that, we have to say like that. So, that is the only way. Right? For all such questions, what kind of questions? Such questions, see, there is no logic. They ask you. Tell them. Very easily you can answer this question. For all other questions, this could be the simple answer. 
you see language is not logical or illogical it is psychological language is a matter of psychology is a matter of mind what helps you to utter sentences mind plays a very important role so it is psychological your mathematics your computation doesn't work here it is psychological it depends upon the psychology of the learner you tell them that is that will satisfy them that will be answer for all such questions so in our regular classes in our face to face situation we will meet and i will tell you number of things which help you empower empower you enable you to learn language and enrich your english language see let us wind up this class we'll meet you in the next class thank you everybody